So, Curtis. Yeah. Did you hear that they have this new movie that no one really wanted called Overboard? I didn't want it. No one did. Okay. Then why did we make it? <laughs> That's a great question, and I'd love to, I'd love to know the answer to that. Was the, Okay. I really would like to know if the original had this many Mexican people in it as this one does. I'm going to look it up while we're talking. Please, because I'm actually very curious. Something tells me that it does, and something tells me that it probably doesn't. Um, anyways, That was just overboard. a fun way for you to say that you don't know what's going on. That's very true. Um, I, I don't. <laughs> overboard 1987. Yes. I believe there's Kurt also Russell and Goldie Hawn. That's the one. Um. No, they're all white. Oh, well, that answers that Because Kurt Russell plays the guy. Ah, of course. Oh, that makes this movie extra racist. <laughs> that was one thing we were wondering from the beginning is, is this movie racist? And we kind of went back and forth a little bit because we didn't exactly know if it was or wasn't. And there were moments where we were like, okay, that could be potentially very racist. I don't want to say that something's racist if, like... It's towards a culture that I'm not a part of. Right. Like, I know what racism is towards an African-American. Because, like, that's been made pretty public. Right. Really, what that's going to be, what that looks like for people. Of course. But, like, specifically towards the Hispanic community, a lot of that could have been really racist. And I wasn't sure if it was. But also, it was written by white people. Yeah. And directed by a white person. So it could totally be racist. Yeah, exactly. That was why I was, we were always very confused. There were multiple times where we kind of looked at each other and we were just like, was that racist? Uh, it's interesting that, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think this is a racist movie or do you think it's just too hard to tell? Because I think it's just a bit too hard to, to tell. I think it's at the very least borderline racist. I can agree with that. And I think it's probably offensive to the Hispanic community because... I mean, like, they're pretty much depicted as construction workers for the most part. Yeah. That don't speak English well. Yeah, that was one moment we were, I was, we were both very curious. Uh, there's a moment in the movie when, uh, let's see, the main character's name is Leonardo, played by Eugenio Derbez. And he, Leo. Uh, yeah, so essentially this man, at, from a, through a series of contrivances, he ends up in the hands of Kate played by Anna Ferris, who gets him to somehow gets him a job through one of her friends, and that job is construction work. With and other Mexicans. With other Mexicans. Like very specifically Mexicans. Yes. Run from a white guy. So yeah. No, I understand that this is kind of a thing people of this kind of a culture or stereo stereotypically work in construction. But at the same time, the, which wouldn't have been too big of a deal, but the leader, the guy who's like in control of it all, is primarily he's a white guy. So that's why we both of us were just like, uh, "Is this racist?" Just maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. It's hard to tell for yeah. sure. It, it really I don't want to just start judging and being like that was obviously racist, but also it totally seemed racist. Oh, fair, fair enough. But okay, so. let's, let's put the racism aside. Uh, this movie is, it's an interesting one. Um, no, it's not. Don't lie to them. You're right. This movie's boring. This is, okay, this is one of the more cliche movies I think I've ever seen. Um, I understand that comedy is kind of already a walking cliche unless you are doing something very, very special, just in general. But, uh... It seems like this movie has no issue with doing everything that every other comedy has already done. and But like... But like... Unapologetically. Exactly. It doesn't really care that it's doing... It's just basically a movie you've already seen before. It hits all the same beats. It does every single, every single event that happens. You know what's going to happen later. It's one of those liar reveal stories uh, because... Kate essentially takes him in so that way she can study for her own gain versus um, him actually... It's pretty much kidnap and abuse. It pretty much is. No, it totally is. Yeah, and so it's... This is a very... This movie asks the audience to believe in a lot. Um, 
<laughs> and it doesn't. But I just don't. It doesn't work though because okay, so Anna Ferris, her character, for the most part, is she has this nursing degree that she's wanting to get. She's a test that's coming out, big test. And so she, that she's failed. Yes, more than once already. Exactly. And so she's trying to study while also I mean, also take care of her kids and also hold down. Was it like I think two two jobs or three? I think they well, hit at three. It was two jobs. Okay. And then it suddenly turned into one job because of our male lead throwing her off of a boat. Right. And so very quickly throwing her off a boat. Yeah. So she's holding on a, a number of jobs. One is cleaning. One is pizza delivery. Uh, clearly, it's hard on her. She's getting evicted from her house. We find out at one point. And so, but that never comes back. Yeah. Exactly. There are things in here that are also brought up that are just never referenced ever again. And that's one of them. The eviction notice that that never one comes felt back like all. the the room with uh, I definitely have breast cancer. Oh yeah, that's what that scene felt like to me. Yeah, it that's was very, like, very oh, true. by the way, my house is I'm getting evicted. Yeah, the so. this, this scene when she's like, the results are in. I definitely have breast cancer. This is just like the results are in. I'm going to get evicted from my house, and exactly. then no one cares after yeah. that. Yeah, no one cares. It never comes back. Anyways, so it was so good. Somehow she comes across uh, Mr. Leonardo here, who has retrograde amnesia, which I'm just going to say right now, um, that's not how amnesia works. But for the sake of this story and 4,000 that are just like it, they have they give the main character amnesia. and Very specific amnesia. Yes. Here's the thing. This is probably my biggest criticism. So what I've just told you, if you haven't seen the movie, and what I've just told you, anything that your mind comes up with after the fact is probably going to happen in this movie. If you saw the trailer, you know what happens in the whole movie. Yes, because this follows the exact same story beats as every single comedy I think I've ever seen, at least ones that aren't – that are just mediocre. Uh, This is one that – it's so predictable that it just kind of becomes a bore because you know that, okay, well, they just did the situation. This is going to happen because of it. And it does. And it comes out almost exactly how I predicted it or however Curtis predicted it. It's, it's a walking cliche. This is cliche the movie. Almost. But it never, it never got funny, though. No. That was my problem. Like, there were, there were points where I looked at you and I was like, oh, I wish that this would happen instead. Yeah. Because that would just be more outrageous, and even if it were worse, it would definitely be more entertaining for me to watch a movie that went to that type of bad. Right. But this stays pretty flatlined the whole time, and it's everything you're expecting it to be. Oh, I know. And it makes it super boring on yeah. top of not being entertaining, like, yeah. like as far as like the plot points go or the jokes, because the jokes aren't funny either. Oh, I know. And it's funny because – okay, we were in a theater with, I think, what, 10 other people maybe – there might have been 10 of us total. Yeah. But they loved they, it. Yeah. They ate it up. And at one point, the the woman who was sitting next to us, I thought she was about to have a heart attack because she was laughing so hard. That woman behind me sounded like a slow motion sprinkler when she was <laughs> laughing. <laughs> she was like, huh, 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 huh. <laughs> That's it was beautiful. so funny. Yeah, they were just I mean, they were just eating it up. Like they loved every minute of it. And it was funny because it was primarily we were the youngest. I think we were the youngest ones there. Oh, totally. Yeah, I know that the people in front of us and the people next to you. I didn't. I didn't see the people behind us. They the were people definitely behind older. us were probably a little bit older than us, probably okay. in their thirties. All right. Yeah, I know that the people in front of us and next to us were definitely. And they older. were super loud. Yes. And their phones were going off, and they were rambling off in Spanish. Yeah. So I assume that the only reason they came to see the movie is because it had some sort of Hispanic representation, right? Not because they were huge fans of the original Overboard. Right. Because I don't think anybody is. Yeah. I, how popular is Overboard? I mean, it has Kurt Russell in it, sure. And he's definitely pretty popular. Probably Kurt Russell at his prime. Yeah. I mean, he's, of course, very popular from The Thing and other things that John Carpenter has done. Or he's he's just a very popular guy. He's a very versatile actor. I It's clear at this point uh, by the 80s that he's made himself pretty known. Regardless... I don't know how popular that movie is. I think I've maybe heard about it one other time. And I got it confused with Going Overboard, which is Adam Sandler's first movie, which I know from the IMDb Bottom 100, which is regarded as uh, not only Adam Sandler's worst movie, which is, I mean, a pretty 
big achievement in, anyways, but also just all around just a terrible movie. And so that's what I got confused as, which is not true. This is not the remake of Going Overboard. And I was scary when I saw Overboard come out, the, the announcement for it, that I was like, oh no, they're remaking this with uh, the Adam Sandler old comedy. It's not something different. This movie already looks much better. This, the original. Yeah. I was looking at before we began, before the movie that we went to go see started. It does. Well, I don't know what else we can really say about this movie other than it's ridiculously boring. The performances are boring. Oh. The cinematography actually, was boring. let's talk about some of the acting because there... It ranges from boring to laughable. Yes, that is very least. true. I yeah. laughed a couple of times at some lines that were delivered. You crumpled up into a ball a couple of times. I did. So, because of some lines that were delivered. It's true. Uh, yeah, the acting in this is not good. I expected a lot more from Eugenio Derbez because I, I know his name and he's in a lot of stuff. And so seeing this, I was just like, oh, is this how he usually acts? I mean, I, I'm guessing he's a comedian, uh, if I were to guess. I, I, Judging by that promo we saw in the theater last okay, week. Okay, yeah, that's true. He must be some kind of comedian. We had a promo. What was it even for? I can't remember. Uh, every time we went to that specific theater, because I went, we went there two nights in a row. Right. Or I went there two nights in a row. You came with me one of those two nights. They showed this promo for the Cinemark Theater in our area that was like him. So you guys have probably seen it. It's like him getting popcorn or yeah. whatever at the theater. And they're talking about their super awesome ticket discount deal that's not that great. And then he talks about how you should see Overboard. That's right. But it wasn't that funny. It was really kind of... It, it was, didn't land very well. For me, it was very cringy. And I it hurt for me to get through that entire commercial. And that was like the whole movie, though, For as far as he was concerned. Yeah. Until he started like acting like a normal person. Right. When he acted like a normal person, I thought he was fine. Right. Anna Ferris wasn't funny. And she can be very funny. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't funny. The so, kids were... Oh. Some of the worst kid actors... Now, I'll say this. I think the best of the kids is the teenager. Although, no, I thought she was fine. Yeah, I think she does the best out of the three of them, but I would love to see them do more because there's not much to them. They're super bland. Yeah, I mean, bland everyone... Bland is the best word to describe this movie. Yeah, I think not only the, the movie itself, but all the characters are bl super bland. bland. Yeah, okay. So everyone in, in uh, Leonardo's family is just your most basic of characters. They're the rich, they're the rich people who have some company that it does something. I don't ever think they actually ever go into detail with that. This movie is like a bad Looney Tunes cartoon yeah, mixed yeah. with a soap opera. Mm -hmm. And they hint at both of those things being the case the whole movie. Exactly. Because Leo has a Speedy Gonzalez tattoo on his butt cheek. And the guy that works in the pizza shop that has nothing to do with the rest of the movie is only there to talk about his soap operas. Right. And at one point, Leonardo goes in and he's like engaging in the conversation with him. Like, what's going on? You know, this is bland Looney Tunes soap opera rice cake. Right. Now, uh, I think I mentioned that I didn't exactly know Eugenio Derbez. I do, actually. And there was a movie that he starred in and also directed, and I've also reviewed it uh, on our website. It's called Instructions Not Included. I would say, now it's been, oh gosh, that was about a year and a half, almost two years now, actually. No, it would have been about a year, a year and a half, that I reviewed that movie because I had to watch it for Spanish class. Uh, oh, I remember that. Yes, I... I reviewed it and I gave it a positive score and I said that I think I gave it like a seven or something like that. Um, I'll link it down in the description. Anyways, I found the movie to be quite enjoyable and I really did. I really did like it because of what it, what uh, what the movie was about because it was really not your typical movie. It was really out there and kind of crazy, but it was unapologetically crazy and it worked. I mean, and you for liked the most him part, in it. Yes, him in it. I think I thought that he was quite funny and. The events, because he directed it, and I think he, I'm pretty sure he helped write, yeah, he helped write it too. So this was kind of like his own project, and it sounded right. like he had a lot of whatever he wanted, how he wanted the movie to turn out is essentially his vision. And so that, and, that, and I, I said in my review that that sounds, it feels like there is a clear, there's a clear passion here. 
And I still stand by that. I still feel like there was a clear passion. That's one of the reasons why I keep remembering it. It's because I felt like there was this passion that if it wasn't, I'm pretty sure it's um, Eugenio Gerbrez that really wanted to get this movie off the ground and really wanted to, he, he has something to say and he did it, I thought, very, very well. Anyways, if that's a movie that sounds interesting to you, I would definitely go check it out because I enjoyed it a lot. This is not that kind of movie. It feels like Eugenio Derbez was just a second choice for a role that was going to give, be given to somebody else or yeah. whatever. Maybe they had him in mind for the Hispanic culture part of it, but I, I don't know. I think they did it the same reason they, reason they casted Anna Ferris mm-hmm. is because they're like, this guy has a market. This whole movie should just be called This Has a Market. <laughs> that's true. Because... It's just made in the blandest way possible to appeal to the most people possible. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes plastic. Like, I feel like I'm just eating styrofoam. Yeah. When I'm watching this movie. Right. I got so bored, I tried to swallow my phone. Yeah, okay, so Chris... More than one time. How many phones... Okay, let me ask this actually a better question. How many items did you swallow? Because we talked about this later (laughs) after. (laughs) And so, um, I'm just kind of curious... Uh, how many items how many? did you swallow, Curtis? Well, I swallowed my phone more than one time. Yep. Then I tried to swallow my wallet and my hat. And I definitely tried to swallow my fist more than one time. I talk about it more in depth on the on the vlog we did. Yes. Which will hopefully get put up sometime soon. Right. Which is our very initial first thoughts. This is more of an in-depth conversation yeah but. yeah the, i remember the first thing you said was well we just got out of uh what was it <laughs> i said truth or dare too that's right <laughs> we just got out of truth or dare too that's except right. i had more fun in truth or dare yeah oh yeah absolutely at least this truth movie's or dare, not even fun bad yeah at this least, is just boring bad right at least truth or dare even though it was a complete train wreck it was so much fun to watch it, it had happen. heart man yeah there was a clear passion to the train wreck they loved that train wreck mm-hmm and I was a part of that train wreck every step of the uh, way. We experienced that together. We did. And we experienced this together. And uh, we were bored to death together. Yeah, Exactly. So you, you swallowed your phone four times. Your yeah, fists, I think I gave it four out of five. Four out of five swallows. phone swallows? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, I... Okay, here's what the problem is that we're trying so hard to find something to talk about and we don't know what to talk about because there's, there's nothing to talk about. There's literally nothing to say. Exactly. Other than this movie bored me out of my mind. It wasn't funny. Everything was bland. And don't go see it. Yeah. Because it's a waste of time. You're just going to sit there bored. Or if you like it, I mean, that's great. Go for it. Just know that it's a product literally built to appeal to you. Right. And not like a piece of art. And that's okay sometimes. It just didn't work for me here. And it's super boring. Go see something else. Right. Something better. You're right. And we watched, oh, uh, what was that other movie? Uh, with the parents. Tully. The, that one too. Oh. Uh, no, Blockers. That's the one we watched. Yuck. I Would you it. consider this to be better than Blockers, Curtis? Yes. Okay. But also way more boring. Fair enough. <laughs> In terms of technical specs and just general filmmaking, it, this has, this has miles over Blockers. Yeah. But also, Blockers was a lot more fun to watch because it just exploded. Yeah. And we got to watch John Cena shove tubes up his butthole full of alcohol for no yep. real reason. Boy, that was a good time. That was... Mm. And then in this movie, I just sat bored. Right. So in terms of entertainment, Blockers wins every day. Yes. But in terms of general filmmaking, Blockers was awful. And right. this has a little bit of a leg up. Right. To be fair, Blockers is a bit more shock humor. And this one's just kind of your typical comedy. Uh, so this one's a bit more safer if you want to go with maybe the family or something. Uh, I yeah, don't w- see blockers with your family, no, please. No, 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 no. That'd be bad. Anyways, uh, okay, I guess we can just go into our final score, rec- uh, final thoughts and I recommendations. I, I cannot think of anything else to say. This movie don't is, see it. Yeah, this movie is so shallow it's okay you know the kiddie pool at the at the community swimming pool that is like three feet deep no no it's like maybe a foot deep maybe oh that's my sweet spot yeah that's my zone in the pool that's your zone yeah (laughs) this is what the movie feels like to me is that it's kind of got something there is a moment in this movie 
where I could see, okay, they're actually trying. That would be when, well, it's at the very end. Uh, I guess I, I guess I shouldn't give it away. But there's a moment where I felt, okay, well, at least it's trying something. Uh, it doesn't do it well. In fact, the moment the moment's over in like two minutes, and that's kind of what it we feels can like. We just talk about it. Nobody cares. You know what? No you're one's right. seeing this movie. So explain what happens, Curtis. Are you talking about the boat at the end? Well, the so the part before the boat, uh, when the parents come by, or when the dad comes by and picks them up from the house to the boat. That that whole scene. Oh, okay. So yeah. like the dad comes home and he's like, "Hey, come back with us." And the memory loss guy suddenly remembers everything. Yeah, out of nowhere. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go back with them. And he's like shocked that everything's a lie. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into the house and like we just stare at him for roughly 30 seconds, not doing anything. And I'm like, oh, he's going to have a change of heart. And then he comes back out and is like, bye. You guys are awful. And then changes his mind like the next day in the middle of the ocean, swimming and then, like, tries to negotiate for all the money he can get because his dad's going to disown him if he marries this girl. And then that doesn't work. So he's like, fine, I'll choose her over all my money. Right. And we're like, okay, we expected it to go this way until it doesn't. And the movie completely undermines its entire message yep. by letting him get all the money and still get the girl at the same time. Yep. The end. And then we got to watch really crappy wedding speeches from <sighs> all the characters that were just annoying that was there for what reason <laughs> i don't know if it need it's like when they used to throw bloopers at the end of the credits yeah except, except these aren't bloopers except it's just boring and dumb yeah yeah so this movie just it wasn't kind of, even creative right they didn't even try to do something anything new with it they were just like oh right regular wedding speeches like this, there, are, there are comedies out there that do that yeah that show the blooper reel on a on a credit, oh, yeah. on a credit roll, but they get creative with it. One of my favorites of all time is Anchorman. Right. Yeah. The credits in Anchorman are some of the funniest credits ever. Yeah. Because they show bloopers from the from the movie, which is just Will Ferrell improvising all the lines that end up making it to the final cut. Yeah. And then randomly they start showing scenes of like bloopers of from Smokey and the Bandit from nineteen eighty. <laughs> Like the Burt Reynolds Western. Yeah. Just like out of nowhere, they just start showing bloopers from Smokey and the Bandit. Right. Like that's very funny, but it's also super creative. Right. So like they do the typical, all right, we're going to start showing fun stuff that we you stick around to watch the credits, but they do it in a way that's elevated. Right. In a way that like makes the humor just that much funnier. Right. This is just like, I'm going to poop in a cup and you're going to laugh at it because it's funny or... You're just not, and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to keep doing it because I think it's funny. Right. Yeah. This the whole humor is just so simple. Like I think I'm. I think I turned to it at one point and said, "Yeah. By the way, uh, all this humor they wrote the scene first and then wrote the humor afterwards. Whereas they took. Oh, totally. Yeah, they took whatever was in front of them and said, "Okay, here's the joke. Here's the punchline. And whatever came to their mind first, they wrote Let's it down. Build the scene. Yeah. Out of the joke. Right." And, and then it turns into a Looney Tunes cartoon. Exactly. And but so the like jokes, in the worst way possible. Yeah. And so the wor the jokes, if they're not funny because you know what they're pointing to, you know what the punchline is going to be because you know that it's a joke. Yep. It's not one of those smart comedies that subtly introduces the joke and then at the very end of the scene you understand, oh, and then you get it. I, I know Ghostbusters says this a lot where it builds up the joke so much to – uh, to the point where you begin to question, okay, is this a joke or isn't a joke? And then when it gives you the punchline, you go, that's really funny because of how smart it because is. Because, exactly. And this isn't smart. No. And it, dumb humor can be funny. Yeah. Also, Anchorman. Right. Anchorman, dumb humor is great. And I'd say the perfect mix between the two is Monty Python, really just anything. Dumb and do. smart. Dumb and smart humor, where the humor sounds like it's really stupid, but when you really think about how complex it is, then it becomes smart humor because it is just so dumb that it becomes smart again. The joke of this, like the way this movie tells a joke would be like this. Hey, Alan. Yes, up? I hit my head on the door today. Oh, yeah? That's it. That's the whole <laughs> okay. joke. Yeah, that that is pretty accurate. Overboard! Yeah, not good. Uh, Well, I guess now we can get into final thoughts. I can't, I can't, slowly I'm thinking of things, but 
there, the, you get the general gist of it all. There's no. Don't see it. Stuff. It's yeah. boring. It's a waste of time. Yeah. They're go see Infinity War again. Mm-hmm. Go see. I don't care what you see. Just don't see this. Yeah. There's no reason for this. This is the least entertaining movie out there right now. Easily. This blockers is blockers. I was entertained by. Yeah, blockers. Okay, it's not blockers, a good movie. No. I didn't like. I didn't like it, but I was entertained by it. Right, and in my mind. Blockers, although can be entertaining, we both found it almost unbearable. Oh yeah, um, but I love that. Yes. I love watching movies that I think are just awful. Right, so, I find that entertaining. In my mind, they're almost on the same level because the good and bad outweigh, or the good and bad make them almost exactly the same in my mind. That's fair. Yeah. Either way, I think I'm giving this a solid four out okay. of ten. Because it it's at least passable. It's just not creative, and it's just a complete waste of time. Right. I'm so going to give... I'll probably give it a four. Sure. Sure. I'm going to give this a three out of ten. There is really no reason for you to see this. It's like every other comedy you, you've ever seen. And what you think the message is going to be is what the message is going to be. What you think the events of the movie is going to happen, that's what's going to happen. It is just that cliche, and it it's not special. You're gonna this movie will be forgotten in a week. It already has been. Yeah, I forgot it. Yeah, like that's part of the that's reason why, why we're we, tra- that's struggling. why we filmed the vlog. Yeah, because I was like, I'm going to forget everything about this movie that stood out to me. Exactly, because nothing in this movie stood out to me. Exactly. So I guess that's really about it. Unless you have anything else to say, I don't. Whoopity scoop, <laughs> scoop diddy whoop, scoop diddy whoop diddy scoop. Uh, got in my pocket, my back pocket, in my back pocket. Oh no! Uh, inside jokes between Curtis and I. Well, they're both songs. Yes, yeah, the true. first one. Just go listen to Kanye's new song. Kanye's new song and Whoopity Scoop Poop. And uh, what's the Wolfpack? Oh, Wolfpack. That's it. Yeah, you guys need to listen to Wolfpack. Yeah. V u l f p e c k. Exactly. Wolfpack. You show me them today. Well, at least that song, that back pocket song, and I fall in love. And we. They're it's great. Catchy. They're super fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's really about it. I there's something else to talk about. There, this movie's pretty empty. I'm so bored already. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Well, that's about it. I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. There's no reason to continue. No, nope, uh, no reason. All right. Well, thanks for joining me again, Curtis. Maybe yeah. this will be a, a common thing because now At we. At this point, it might as well be. Yeah. All right. I I'm I'm glad we get to have a whole summer to do this. Me too. Uh. Anyways, maybe we'll have more people on. We'll see what happens. I don't know yet. It's the the summer just started for us. Well, by the time this comes out, it might be a little bit, might be a few days into it. Anyways, all right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening, guys. I uh, hope you have a good one. Just don't, don't see this movie. It's yeah, not, don't please, it's not please, worth your God, time. don't spend your money on this. Yeah, go listen. So go listen to Corbin and I's podcast. We're doing some more retrospectives. We just finished recording today. By recording this, we just finished recording Jurassic World. So that should be out pretty soon if it isn't out, as if it isn't out already anyways thanks guys for listening um i can't think of anything else to say other than this outro i'm just gonna keep going bye. until we reach the 30 minute mark okay bye